Hey guys, uh, welcome to the shed. I'm just uh, going to run over quickly what an RCD is and why they're imperfect. And maybe we'll pull one apart and see what makes them tick, or in this case, not. Um, the first thing about RCDs, they've got about a million fucking different names, like residual current devices, safety switches, uh, ground fault interrupters, you know, earth leakage detectors, earth leakage breakers. They're just they're out of fucking control with the naming. But what they're supposed to do is they're supposed to detect a current imbalance. So rather than the electricity going through the device between, you know, active and neutral, if any of it goes between active and earth, like, you know, active through me into the earth through my shoes, it's supposed to detect that and turn the power off real quick. And because they're mechanical and electronic and stuff, they can go wrong. So they're supposed to have this test function. So you hit the test button, right? And, you know, it tests it, make sure it works, right? Do you trust it? So... This one's actually failed, and I'll show you why, and I'll, I'll sort of reproduce the failure. But it's not even an old one, right? It's got a, a date mark here. Made in 2011, in the fifth month of 2011, right? So it's not an old one. It hasn't been, you know, sitting around in the arc. And it works, you know. Light comes out when you turn the switch on. Light turns off when you turn the switch off. Um, and before anyone accuses me of having shit wiring in this shed, no, I didn't fucking do it myself. But this here is a PowerPoint tester. And you can see here the um, the lights, right? Top two lights mean both neons on correct wiring proceed with test, right? So this is confirming the wiring in the shop's good, right? We've got we've got earth, we've got active, we've got neutral, we've got power. You've seen, okay? So I'll do a quick test. Okay, so here's what we got. We've got a portable appliance tester, and I used to think this whole portable appliance testing stuff was just absolute bullshit. It was just a bunch of guys who didn't know shit making money out of people who didn't know any better, and it was just some bullshit standard. But um, maybe I'm coming around. Anyway, so we've got this calibrated portable appliance tester plugged in, and I might do a video on how it works normally, but today I'm just going to use it to test the RCD. So what it'll do is it'll actually cause a trip current, like instead of pressing the test button, it will actually cause the same sort of fault that's supposed to be, you know, protected by. And then time how long this thing takes to activate. So, I'm no expert by any means, but let's see what happens. Let me see the screen there, okay. So, just move this in a bit. Um, okay, so it's a 30 milliamp RCD. Hit the 30 milliamp button. Test. Fail. Big fucking fail. Try it again. So this thing actually does a couple of different types of tests. You notice that it's got a 180 degrees or a zero degrees. It'll actually try causing it to trip at different parts of the phase. So failed at 180 degrees. Push it again. It'll try it at zero degrees. Fucking nothing. It really pisses me off, right? So I'll just put this lamp on it so you can see that it's legit, right? This is no bullshit. So we do the test. You'll actually see the light come on because it puts some power through it as it's doing its test. Fucking fail. Every time it fails, right? If I plug the thing back into the mains rather than through this appliance tester. Lights on. So now the appliance tester is completely out of the circuit, right? Alright, on. Doesn't trip. So, I mean, it trips when you push the test button, but I think we've pretty comprehensively demonstrated that it's not trustworthy to save your life. Anyway, let's pull it apart and see what the fuck is wrong with this thing, because this is shit, right? This shouldn't happen. This could kill someone. Okay, so the first thing to do is cut the fucking plug off this thing. Alright. No one's going to get hurt with this now. I guess the next thing to do is try pulling it apart. Probably remove this. 
because it's days as an RCD are over. Um, so there's no obvious screws at all on the unit. Um, I'm not going to show you the brand name in case they decide to sue me for making light of their absolute piece of shit. Anyway. When I was a kid, I watched my dad do this. And he used to somehow price these bits out. Now, I'm going to make a fucking pig's ear of this. Mm, Got to use a good German screwdriver for this. Anyway, what he did was kind of like that, except better. Dad, if you're watching this, I'm really sorry. Uh, so you can see here. It just seems to be pretty much a domestic circuit board RCD. So you can actually see the DIN rail mounts in there. So this is designed to really sit on someone's bloody fuse box rather than on my bench. Anyway, let's have a quick look at what we can see from here. You'll notice that there's some overcurrent protection. It's just a little circuit breaker. They're required, apparently, by law for anything where you can overcurrent it. So this one, you know, 10 amp, 10 amp, 10 amp, 10 amp. So you can have 40 amps potentially coming through a 10 amp socket. So they make them put these little overcurrent things in there. That's what that is. Any electricians watching, please do look away, because I'm sure there's a right way of getting these fucking knob ends out, but anyway. Okay, at least we've exposed some screws, now we've got a chance of pulling this fucker apart. Of course. Can't do it with a regular screwdriver. Too wide. It's almost like they want people to not use electrical screwdrivers and shit like this. I'm going to use these really narrow ones, they're good. These wear ones are nice. But, yeah, they just didn't give us any chance of getting it with a regular insulated screwdriver. Expose the inner workings of the thing. Alright, so this is what is in your portable RCD. We've got our inlet cord and earth comes off the inlet cord and goes from this power point to that power point with no interaction at all with the RCD. And we've got our active and neutral, hot and cold, whatever you want to call it, uh, going into the back of the power points via the overcurrent that I was talking about before and through the RCD. One interesting thing, they've used solder, which I would have thought is a bit shit. Uh, if it gets really hot, uh, the solder's just going to melt. This is a thermal overload, right? It's designed to get hot and then break the circuit. But these fucks have just used solder, right? Isn't that going to melt? Anyway. Uh, what other atrocities can we find in here? I guess the first one is the RCD. Let's pull that apart and see what's going on. Okay, look at that, they've used bootlace ferrules, which is nice. At least, at least they've done that right. I can't expect to see it shoved in there. Interestingly enough, I wonder if they've used bootlace ferrules for the... Uh, for the power board. 
I've got no idea how to pull this apart. Can't even see how the mounting screws are arranged. Well, when in doubt, undo every other screw. Oh, for fuck's sakes, look at that. Soldered. Again, they've soldered on earth connections. That's, I don't know, that's just fucking shit ass. I don't know. Any electricians watching, tell me, is this right? Should things like that be soldered? All right, that's gonna get 10 amps plus, All right? And they've gone and soldered it. Oh, that's so. Uh, Throw this where it belongs. So I'm 100% sure this thing's not designed to be disassembled, but I managed to force it open with some screwdrivers and leave it open. Lever it open. And then what do we got? We've got the test button, which unfortunately works. And that looks like it pushes this little spring against that hunk of metal. So there's a tiny little spring. Well, fuck, look at that. I knew it would be shit, right? I knew this is built to a price. But fucking hell, look at this shit. Okay, firstly, what's happening? We've got the active and the neutral going through a toroid, which is just a transformer, really. And the toroid also has another winding on it. And what happens is, if there's any kind of balance between the two, this winding is going to get a couple of volts across it. And then we've got a tiny little circuit board here. And this little circuit board has got some semis on it that are... Anyway, this magnet wire, it comes off the, uh, the toroid, it seems to be going in. And there appears to be diodes, two diodes, which would be rectifying that into a DC voltage. And there it goes, it says DC2. And then the output of that DC voltage seems to be coming into here. Where is this thing? And that appears to be, I don't know, feels like it's more mechanical than electronic. Some kind of magnet arrangement. So it looks like it's a solenoid. that would release and cause the thing to trip. So, all in all, there's fewer electronic components than I thought I'd. I was expecting to see something like an op-amp or something taking the output of this extra winding and uh, and amplifying that and using that to, to make the trip decision. But, no, it's just a couple of diodes and this arrangement. And then, of course, we've got what is most probably a regular style of thermal circuit breaker.
thermal or magnetic, probably both. Anyway, that's what's in an RCD. There's not a lot to go wrong, but Jesus, man, they've made this like fucking shit. I know it's built to a price, but this is like a safety device. I, I expect, I expect more. I don't know. It really pissed me off. Like magnet wire, really? Why can't they use some nice insulated wire for this bit? You know, it actually looks like it's the same magnet wire that they've used there. I suppose that does have an advantage. It's it's only one thing, it's one part. You're not going to have joints and connections and stuff to go wrong. But man, it's fucking bush leg, as, uh, as Arduino versus Evil would say. So what's an RCD and why is it important? What's supposed to happen is that the RCD is supposed to detect a fault before it can kill someone. So if we've got a situation like we've got a toaster, Got a heating element. That one's connected to active. It's connected to neutral. And we've got the outside of the device connected to earth. And some dingus sticks their bloody toaster, you know, knife in the toaster. So their foot is also connected to earth and their hands connected to the thing anyway so what's got is uh, this guy's got active going through him through the knife through his heart through the earth killing him so what's supposed to happen is the RCD monitors what's going in and coming out and if there's an imbalance of more than 30 milliamps for most things or 10 in like a hospital situation it's supposed to cut the power and it can go wrong, so there's supposed to be a test button. So you touch the test button and the thing goes off, and what do you assume? You assume it's going to work. But, you know, there's not that many parts in here to go wrong. But, geez, some of the construction's pretty fucking amateurish. So, yeah, this is the insides. And the way it works is that is a toroid. And instead of it just being one turn, there's two turns. But there's also a turn of some extra wire and when it doesn't match up there's a bit of voltage on that and it uses that to pull in this little solenoid here overcomes the spring tension and that pokes the circuit breaker off so that monitors that goes into this little board and then on the other end of that board is the solenoid and the plunger Pretty simple. Tell you what though, you know, you really want this to be right. And up until now, I used to think appliance testing was a load of shit, you know. It was just something to do to keep safety guys happy for no good reason. But I tell you what, the test button sets it off a real fault that could be a person, doesn't set it off. Man, that's shit. Alright, well, thanks very much for watching.